Hi, so in this video, we're going to talk about the structure of a basic summit math unit. And the diagram that you see on the screen pretty much breaks down everything that we're going to be talking about in this video. So just kind of try to follow along and see if it makes sense to you. So for starters, that each math unit is organized as a sequence of concept lessons. And concept lessons are basically what a, each day of a math class is supposed to be like. Now, that is going to be centered on, the, on solving problems and often working collaboratively between students and teacher um, to create solutions for these problems using strategies that students come up with and then share with each other to construct an overall summary of how to approach it. And it may seem like the students figure it out, but yeah, that's kind of the idea. The idea is to engage in a process of inquiry driven by problem-based uh, approach. Now, that doesn't mean that students don't get help. They are facilitated by the teacher. But uh, that's kind of like the idea. Now, the unit actually begins with a launch, which is an entry event that has like a, a real life activity, which usually is more active, which allows students to engage with the actual concepts of the unit, followed by a series of lessons, one after the other. Now, each day at the end of the lessons, the students will then practice using exercises or exercise sets and this is either going to be done during their own individual practice time or homework. And then the skills in these exercise sets are spaced out over time, intermixed, and there's even some intentional review that happens throughout the year uh, of previous units work. Uh, so it's like a sparring curriculum. Now, this set of exercises, uh, at least when I teach it, I post the answers so that students can actually make sure that they're doing it correctly. And obviously, uh, we work with students, whether it's an SDL or a class time, doing pullout groups, going over those problems uh, uh, if they uh, have questions about them or need more help. So the exercise sets is where the practice uh, comes in. Now, once in a while, you may also want to pick a small group of students to work with in order to help students catch up with things that they have not gathered in the unit so far. Once again, whether that's a, a portion of the class time or whether it's done during STL or a pullout time during the school day, uh, the important part is that you're going to be targeting certain students that needs help. Then there's also portfolio problems. Now, portfolio problems are basically opportunities for students to have a rich, meaningful application-based uh, use of the unit concepts, kind of like the launch event, but later in the unit where they already have mastered it. So it's less of a discovery kind of activity and more of an application kind of activity. And students can do multiple preferred problems if they want, but they usually expect it to choose one for the unit. Now, as the students go through uh, each of the lessons, every once in a while, they have to engage in what's, in, it's what's called a focus area. Now, the focus area is basically paired with the unit, and it's um, where students will learn the kind of more rote, simple, repetitive, basic math skills, uh, which are tied to the content, right? Now, the focus area is full of, of resources. It has a playlist with videos. It has, con it has uh, checks for understanding. It has notes. It has handouts, practice, a lot of resources to help students practice the content even more. But at a different level of what they do during class, where you're doing a lot of inquiry and in, in, in project problem-based learning and higher level access to the content, while the focus area is going to be more uh, straight up, here's how you do this. This is a basic math problem and iterative steps that you have to do to actually get to the solution. The end of unit of assessment is when students actually demonstrate that they have mastered the unit content in a final assessment where they actually have to face problems just like those that they had to face during class time. So there'll be higher level problems. Now, before the end of the unit, stu students will usually have to face cool downs. Now, cool downs are basically kind of, I think of it as quizzes or checkpoints for a normal project. These are just little checks that students will perform at the end of each unit to make sure that not each unit, each lesson or every set of lessons to make sure the students are in the direction of a good result by the time they get to the end of the test. So again, students learn math concepts in a lesson in a problem-based approach. And at the end of each of those lessons, they engage in cool downs, which uh, 
are used as a, as a, a formative assessment to, to tell them how they're doing at, towards the unit of assessment, which is the final grade and accounts for most of their grade, 70% of their grade or so. 10% of their grade also comes from work that they do doing math uh, portfolio problems where they choose a problem to apply and they usually halfway toward, towards the unit and then towards the end of the unit all again, they will start experiencing those. Uh, this is paired with exercise sets, which are allowing them to practice the work at the home, pull out guided math groups to help students catch up with their understanding if they're uh, struggling, and focus area work, which also helps review the content at a different kind of level. And on this last screen here, we have a description of what each of these pieces that I just described is, why Summit believes that it's important to include them, when in the unit they actually take place, and how teachers and students engage in them. So uh, I'm not going to go through this in too much detail, but it's a really awesome summary slide. So if you decide you want to, please uh, uh, pause the screen and take a read at it. And you can also find... Uh, of uh, the presentation that I'm using in, in this video in the description of the video. So I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you in the next video. We're gonna be talking about the structure of each math lesson or our concept lesson. See you guys then.